news and support for the borders with David Knox. Good afternoon. A Hoik man has been jailed after attacking several police officers. 35-year-old Dale Devlin of Harden Place pleaded guilty at Jedburgh Sheriff Court to five offences which happened on January the 24th and 25th. He admitted two breaches of the peace by entering a property in Hill End Drive and refusing to leave, entering the garden of a neighbouring property, trying the door handle and ringing the doorbell. When police arrived on the scene, he headbutted one constable, bit him on the hand, kneed him in the groin and spat on his face. He also assaulted a female officer by kicking her on the body, and the Hoyt Police Station kicked another constable on the head and bit him on the hand. Sheriff Peter Patterson imposed a range of custodial sentencing, totaling 300 days, backdated to when he was first arrested. Scottish Borders Council are developing a new sports strategy for the region that brings together health, education and wider services to ensure activity benefits all ages and backgrounds. The, la the last sports strategy was created 13 years ago and focused mainly on target sports. Council leader Ewan Jardin says this one will still support mainstream sports but will now be more far-reaching. So part of the Live Borders review, one of the things that came out was that real need for a sports strategy. So not a Live Borders sports strategy, strategy, a Scottish Borders sports strategy. So we're working with Sports Scotland, NHS, education, just to make sure that we, we get that, that right. And obviously the Borders will be heavily involved, as with other trusts. But when you're looking at sports, sports evolved so much the past few years that I'm not too sure we've, we've kept up with it. Scottish Borders has always been ahead of the sporting curve. I mean, look at our rugby heritage, our athletic heritage, our hockey heritage, but the world's changing. People are now into basketball, skate and, you know, dance and, and things like e-sports. Support staff at Borders College are amongst thousands across the country who will go on strike over pay and risks to job next Thursday. The dispute over pay has been going on for more than 18 months, as staff say they're still waiting for a pay rise due in September of 2022. They're seeking a guarantee that pay rises won't come at the expense of jobs. Unison Scotland's further education branch secretary, Chris Greenshields, said that staff had been left with little choice than to strike. The new life for one of Scotland's oldest pubs is continuing to flourish. The Crook Inn in rural Peeblesshire closed in 2006 after more than 400 years of continuous operation. Following a community takeover more recently, the dilapidated Steading building has been turned into a cafe. And now a planning application has been submitted to build four timber glamping pods, a toilet block and store to the west of the cafe building. The bid is seen as vital to the continued redevelopment and sustainability of the site. A Galashiels nursing student has made it to the finals of the Scottish Apprenticeship Awards. 18-year-old Martina Gazelle is now nominated for the award of Foundation Apprentice of the Year after completing her studies in social services and healthcare at Wilkie Gardens. She's now studying at Glasgow's Caledonian University for a degree in adult nursing. The winner will be announced during the Scottish Apprenticeship Week between the 4th and the 8th of March. Well, sport now and in athletics, Berwickshire's Guy Lermont has missed out on Team GB place at the World Indoor Championships. The 31-year-old was beaten on the line in the final of the 800 metres yesterday in the final of the British Indoor Championships. In racing, Greenlaw trainer Sandy Thompson and his jockey son-in-law Ryan Mania are celebrating after two doubles in three days. After winning at Kelso with Empire Steel and dedicated here on Friday, the duo had another two wins at Musselburgh yesterday with Who's My Daddy making a victorious chasing debut and Cool Kill landing a handicap chase win. There's also wins for hoy jockey Craig Nicholl on Captain Quint and trainer Ian Jardin with Bashful. In rugby, in the Premiership, Kelso and Selkirk lost on the road at Glasgow Hawks and Harriet Blues, respectively. In National League 1, Gala were defeated in their final match at Highland, but Peebles claimed a 24-20 win at Kirkcaldy in National 2. And at the other end of the table, Berwick picked up a bonus point win over Gordonians. Jack Webster was playing his 300th game for the Blacks. We played some cracking rugby in the first half. We looked like a side that hadn't won much this season, and Gordonians were camped on our line uh, with the final play, but Captain Ali Greve came up with a massive play to hold them up over the line to confirm our win. Without being grammar losing today, that extends our cushion over them. 
but we aren't taking anything for granted and we'll be looking for two wins from two uh, from our final games of the season to make sure that we're safe in National 2 next season. In football, for the league, Gallifrey Reading Rovers narrowly lost 4-3 to Celtic B at Netherdale, while Berwick Rangers went down 2-1 at home to East Stirlingshire. In the East of Scotland leagues, Vale Leithen lost 2-1 at Oakley United and Coldstream went down 4-2 to Stirling University. Now for the Borders weather, with the details, here's Christine McDonald. Remaining dry this afternoon, though with cloud building from the west. Temperatures will peak at 11 to 12 Celsius on the mild side for the time of year with a westerly breeze. Tonight will be dry with a good deal of cloud, lows of 6 or 7 Celsius, southwesterly winds will be brisk. Tomorrow rain will arrive from the northwest during the morning. It'll clear to brighter conditions with some blustery showers in the afternoon. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the border. On digital radio. FM. Your smart speaker. And on BBC Sounds. BBC Radio Scotland. It is 12.36. Now you're listening to Monday's Lunchtime Live with Lucy White here with you until half past one this afternoon. Now, as the fighting carries on in Ukraine, there's a warning that more than half of the country's population is facing huge mental health and financial problems. Russian President Vladimir Putin launched the latest invasion of Ukraine two years ago this month. Andreas Weissenberg is head of disaster and crisis in Europe 